and let's open up the mailbag. Sources close to me tell me that we are indeed live today for the full hour on Sky Sports NFL. So how about a question for one of our most loyal viewers, listeners, and readers? He's been around for a long time, a Red Zone Alk. We've gotten questions from him back when we did PFT yes, Live only as a digital enterprise. He's been around for a long time, and we appreciate his input. Do the Texans, he asks, have time on their side when it comes to placating Deshaun Watson, Shireen, look, I see it as a very simple proposition. They got to figure out a plan and they need to implement it March 17. That's the start of the new league year, because if there's other teams out there trying to figure out what they're going to do at quarterback, they're going to be reluctant to put the brakes on their efforts to work a trade, sign a free agent, do whatever if they're sitting around waiting to see what happens with Deshaun Watson. I don't think time is on the Texans' side. I think they got a lot to do, and in the grand scheme of things, they don't have a lot of time to figure it out. I think the enemy is emerging possibly as the favorite there. We know he's on their list, and I would think he would at least be a finalist who they would talk to. So we're talking about them getting a head coach, Mike. Assuming the Chiefs win, that's going to come after the Super Bowl. Even if it's not, I think Leslie Frazier's probably going to be a finalist too. So one of those two teams has a guy that the Texans are interested in. So I think we're looking at this hire being made after the Super Bowl. At that point, they have to move quickly. That coach has to meet with Deshaun Watson. It'd be smart. He meets with Deshaun Watson before he ever takes that job to assure himself that Deshaun Watson's going to be his quarterback. If he's not, I'm not sure I take that job. But once they do that, they've got to get either Deshaun Watson on board or to the point of, okay, we're going to open this up to a bidding war, get all those teams who are interested in Deshaun Watson, make it known, give us your best offer and pit them against each other, as you've said, Mike. Yeah, and there's a flow chart that definitely needs to be constructed. You and I can figure that out. Yesterday, Miles Simmons and I were talking about it, the imperative nature of getting Deshaun Watson on board with an Eric Bieniemy before Bieniemy signs the contract. And you get the two of them in a room. If I'm Bieniemy, I'm not taking this job until I talk to Deshaun Watson. Can you set it up? I want to talk to him and I want to know, is he on board? I want his word before I take it. So on the flow chart, that ends it. There's, there's nothing to discuss if yeah. Deshaun Watson is on board and has changed his mind and doesn't want out. But the other side of the flow chart, you know, that's the short little, will Deshaun stay? Yes. And the other side is where it can go a bunch of different ways. And they need to be smart about anticipating how the dominoes can fall and when they need to move and how they need to craft a market. And there's a sweet spot there somewhere where they get fair value, but also Deshaun Watson doesn't feel like he's going to a team that after that team gives up what it gives up to get Deshaun Watson, it's going to be 4-12 and 12 right. while he has a great year, too. Then how has he improved his situation? Yeah, that's exactly right, Mike. And he's got that control with a no-trade clause. He can tell the Texans, these are the teams I will go to work it out with one of these teams. All right, Ian's for 79 asks, haven't the Dolphins spent the last 18 months trying to rebuild the roster? Why would they want to give away most of their draft capital for the next three years for a quarterback as good as Deshaun Watson is when they've still got gaps in their current roster? You don't have to give away most of your draft capital for the next three years. I think three first-round picks. If Watson decides he's out, I think offering back to Houston – the third overall pick that would have been theirs anyway, but for the Laramie Tunsil trade, plus Miami's other first-round pick, plus the first-round pick next year is enough to get Deshaun Watson. And when you think about it in terms of making an investment of draft picks, if you're the Dolphins and you say, I'm using my first-round pick and getting Deshaun Watson, how much more beyond my first-round pick am I willing to give up to know that I'm getting, because otherwise I could take a quarterback with my first round pick and he's not going to be any good, like maybe Tua turns out being. So it's easy to justify multiple first round picks and maybe a third one, but I don't think it guts your roster. And I think the Dolphins, one of the few teams, Shireen, best suited to make the trade that will make the Texans happy and still have a good team moving forward. I think it would make the Texans happy, and I think it would make Deshaun Watson happy based on reports that we've heard. I will ask you this, Mike. If you're the Texans, do you want Tua? If you're the Dolphins, do you want to give them Tua? I don't. I haven't seen enough from Tua to want Tua. I'd rather have the draft picks. I'd rather have number three overall and try to take a quarterback draft. than take Tua and two further first-round picks. And Sims and I were talking about that today. You know, this may be so complicated that at the end of the day, it's a three-team deal. 
because it could be yeah. that the team that wants Deshaun Watson has a quarterback that someone else wants more than the Texans would want him. This came up in the context of the possibility of the Raiders doing the deal because I can guarantee you the Texans don't want anyone named Carr playing quarterback for them ever right. again, even if it's spelled different. So maybe someone else gets Derek Carr and that someone else throws in a draft pick and it go and it all it factors in that way. It could be that this one is so big and so complex it takes three teams. So maybe there's another team out there that would love to have Tua if the Texans look at it and say, that's not the guy that we want being our franchise quarterback. And we don't see many of those three-team trades, Mike, so that would be interesting if that were to happen. And remember, even though the trades can't occur until 4 p.m. Eastern on March the 17th, the start of the new league year, the deals can be worked out. It happened just a couple of years ago when Alex Smith was traded Alex. to Washington, clearing out the spot uh, in Kansas City for Patrick Mahomes and then making it clear that Kirk Cousins wouldn't be back and signing with Minnesota. But that deal was done weeks before it became official. It could happen. In theory, it could happen at any time. So we'll continue to watch that story. Shereen, real quickly on the way out the door, Philly, J.J. Philly, should the Lions trade Matthew Stafford? And what value do you see getting back for them they brad holmes a new gm has said he's going to look at the whole roster no guarantees for stafford no guarantee he wants to even be there i think it would be great mike for matthew stafford to start over somewhere else and i think it would be the lions great for them to get a new start with a new quarterback the problem is obviously we're pacing him you got to find somebody better hi i'm mike tarico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from nbc sports